What is up, Stack and Ohana? This is Aloha Stacker, and welcome back to the channel. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about all things peanuts. I'm going to show you off my entire collection of peanuts uh, coins, and we're going to show off some new ones that I have acquired as well. But first, as usual, we were going to go through a couple pieces of channel mail. I only got two, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what was sent uh, to us this week. Okay, this first letter is from Todd Miller, and here are his... Uh, Stickers, don't tread on me, Todd Miller. Todd Miller, a nice skull. That these are some really cool stickers. Check those out. Uh, nothing on the back. So let's take a look at the. Uh, go ahead and leave these up here. And he sent me a nice little note, which reads, "Hello, Aloha Stacker. Here are my channel stickers. Thank you for doing a trade with me. My wall is happy to be getting yours, and thank you for subscribing and supporting my channel. Have a wonderful day, my friend." And that is Todd Miller, and I'll put a link to his channel in the description. And uh, those are his really, really cool stickers. So check those out one more time. I love this one right here. This one is dope. <laughs> All right, this one's actually pretty cool too. They're actually pretty creative and pretty beautiful stickers. So thank you very much, Todd Miller. Second, we have got, uh, well, we got some mail coming from the uh, island nation of Great Britain. And it is from our friend, Mr. Northern Coins. So let us open this up and see what he sent because he sent a lot. So let's check this out. Ooh, we've got to pull, uh, this is stuck in here, hold on. Yeah, this envelope looks like it was pretty well stuffed with uh, goodies. So let's see what we got to begin with. So it looks like he sent a postcard of the Royal Mint with the Britannia and the Lion on it. That is a that is really nice. Look at that. Oh, really cool. Thank you, sir. Let's go ahead and take a look at your note and see what's long. So I'm not going to put it in the thing. He says, hello, Aloha Stacker. I'd like to start this letter by saying thank you for the one tenth ounce silver gift and the stickers. They were awesome. I've ordered some stickers. However, they have not arrived yet. But when they do, I shall send a couple over. I know how much you like ships and, its, and coins, so I do hope you like the coin and the history. Thanks again for your friendship and all the comments on my channel. With kind regards, Northern Coins, P.S. They... Not 100% sure what that says, but it says, I got the Royal Mint and the Mayflower coin was taken from the 2020 annual set. And the two pound coin is the D-Day coin. It shows the names of the beaches and the brave troops landed on June 6, 1944. Okay, so he's talking about the coins. We'll go ahead and just show those off in a second. Let me see. This one doesn't seem to be wrapped up. So what do we got here? Let's go ahead and zoom in. We got the Mayflower. Oh, that is awesome. Look at that. Oh, I like the uh, I like the artwork on that. That is fantastic. And what do we have here? So it looks like here's the coin, the Mayflower, sixteen twenty to twenty twenty. So that would be four hundred year anniversary. It's got the ship on it, so he knows I like the ship coins. Here's the coin specifications. It's two pound cupro nickel, nickel brass, twelve grams, run uncirculated. Jody Clark, I see that name a lot. So Jody Clark is uh, very famous. Uh, I think he does the Queen's. Yeah, he does the Queen's image. That's right. And then uh, Chris Costello does the reverse. And what do we have here? What does it say? New Horizons. During the religious turmoil of Henry VIII's reign, many believe the Church of England was too similar to the Catholic Church from which England broke away. In the years that followed, it created tension within the country and, less, and led some to consider the renewed religious freedom offered by New Horizons. When the Mayflower passenger, passengers sailed from Plymouth, England on 16 September 1620, their hopes were pinned on a fresh start. Many of the saints were religious separatists given permission to leave for, the, for America. Others were skilled craftspeople committed to building a new colony. No matter what spurred them, their faith in the culture had to sustain the 102 men, women, and children through the long, dangerous journey. They landed in Plymouth Bay on 26 December 1620, but were forced to spend that first winter aboard ship. By spring, just under half of those who had landed in the New World had survived. The original Thanksgiving feast was held that autumn after their first successful harvest, and the spirit of the Mayflower programs endures this national celebration to this day. So thank you very much. This is an absolutely beautiful coin. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that, my friend. And looks like we have, uh, this is wrapped up inside of a bag. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this is, oh, this is really neat. Wait till y'all see this one. This one's gorgeous. Oh, there's a couple of coins in here. Give me a quick second, everybody. To bust these out of their, they're inside this baggie. So let me give me a quick second and we will get them out. Enjoy the Libertads in the, in the, in the short term. So I get these out and about. All right. So the first coin that we have here is he sent, is this one? So it looks like a 10 pence and it has, oh, it has a ship on it. Okay, cool. 
So this must have been one of the ones he was talking about. That. That's cool looking. So they got a ship. It's like uh, some type of island discovery. Let me see if he wrote that in the uh, in the note. Maybe not. So, but this is just another one with a ship on it because I think he knows he like I like the ship. So, thank you very much. That is a very cool coin. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this other one. This is the one for, that has to do with. Uh, so this is two pounds. Change checker, and we got. Uh, this is the beaches of Normandy. Okay, so this is pretty awesome. Look at this. This is the D-Day landings, 75th anniversary, and it shows the names of the beaches. You got looks like Utah, Sword, Gold, uh, Juno, and. Oh, I said Sword, Juno. It's hard to see without looking, uh, I'm gonna have to look under the, uh, yeah, I can't tell. I think I got most of them, though. Okay, you got Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. Yeah, there we go. And it uh, shows the beaches they land. I've actually been to Normandy, and I've been onto the beaches, and I've been to the cemetery. It is quite a sight. It's all cleaned up now, of course, but, uh, when you go there and you look out toward the, uh, toward the, toward Great Britain from France, it is just a mat crazy to imagine what took place there you know, 77 years ago now, right? Almost 78, or 77, yeah. So, very cool. Thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate the wonderful gifts. They're very cool coins. All right, let's go ahead and backdrop out, get this stuff removed, and let's go ahead and talk about peanuts a little bit, my friends. So the, the video, oh, check out Northern Coins, by the way. I'll put his link in the description as well. But we're gonna talk about the peanuts coins real fast. So before we talk about each individual coin, I wanna read a brief history of the peanuts comment because I don't know how much you guys know about that, but I didn't know this much until I uh, did some research on it. So in 1947, Schultz started a cartoon. Charles Schultz, by the way, is the creator of Peanuts. In 1947, he started a cartoon feature called Lil Folks for the St. Paul Pioneer Press. It was a flop, never achieving a permanent spot in the paper. In 1950, he compiled his strips and sold the series to the United Features Syndicate, which changed its name to Peanuts. Schultz originally resisted the name change. I wanted to keep Lil Folks, he told Time in 1965. I wanted a strip with dignity and significance. Peanuts made it sound too insignificant. The first strip was printed on October 2nd, 1950 and appeared in seven newspapers. In the strip, Charlie Brown walks two friends, one of whom remarks, well, here comes old Charlie Brown, good old Charlie Brown, yes sir, good old Charlie Brown, how I hate him. <laughs> by the end of the decade, Peanuts had picked up, was picked up by hundreds of newspapers and had won Schultz a Rubin Award, the highest honor given for the National Cartoonist Society. Schultz Peanuts exploded during the 1960s, leaving its fingerprints on everything it touched. Charlie Brown and the gang even graced over the, time, the cover of Time in 1965. The influence didn't just go one way, though. Peanuts evolved in, with a turbulent decade. After Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968, fans pressed Schultz to include a black character. Franklin first appeared in July 31st of that year. Peppermint Patty, a multidimensional sports-loving girl living in a single-parent household, made her debut in 1966, and Woodstock, Snoopy's yellow-feathered companion, finally got his name in 1970. When asked why he named the bird after the music festival, Schultz simply replied, why not? Peanuts triumphed off the, off the printed page and as well. In 1965, a Charlie Brown Christmas first aired, beginning a string of television specials. Two, two later specials, You're a Good Sport, Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, both took home Emmy Awards. In 1967, Snoopy and Friends hit the stage in an off-Broadway production, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, which ran for four years. It remains one of the most performed musicals in history. Charlie Brown and Snoopy even went to the moon in 1969 after the Apollo 10 crew named their command and lunar modules after them. In later decades, Schultz work graced the Louvre and Carnegie Hall. By the 1980s and 90s, Schultz had acquired a massive personal fortune. As he gave millions away to charity, he was frequently listed by Forbes magazine as one of the highest paid entertainers in America, alongside Michael Jordan and Michael Jackson. He became the highest paid and most widely read cartoonist of all time. By 1984, Peanuts had made the Guinness World Records after being syndicated into its 2000th new newspaper. Peanuts, which was read by 355 million people, raked in cash through newspaper licensing, book compilations, merchandising, and endorsements. Schultz's health began to deteriorate in the 1990s. His hands developed a tremor, leaving his classic lines wobblier, wobblier than usual. He suffered a stroke in November 1999 that impaired his vision, memory, and motivation to draw. On December 14, 1999, he announced his retirement. On January 3, 2000, the last Peanuts Daily Strip was published, and Schultz died on February 12th of colon cancer, one day prior to his final, that his final strip hit the press. He was 78 years old. Schultz was posthumously given the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honor given to a civilian. To this day, kids around the world know and love Snoopy. 
So that is a great little history of the background of peanuts. And we'll go ahead and talk about each one of the coins that I have acquired uh, as part of this collection that was done by uh, Peanuts in a, well, with Atmax. So this was the first coin in the series. It was just Charlie Brown at the 70th anniversary. You got Snoopy sitting on top of there. Only 7,000 of these coins were minted. And I don't know how many were put into the TEP, into these packaging. Uh, but on the back, you have all the main characters. And Charlie, uh, on the piano, you can barely see Woodstock. I know I put this under the, I actually put this under the digital microscope to try to show everybody when I first got this coin. Uh, but he is there, it's just really hard to see. So that's the first coin in the series with the 7,000 mintage. I did buy two of these and I actually uh, actually uh, sold one to our one of our friends, Inefficient Stacker, because he missed out on it. Moving on, the next set of the series that came out were, uh, was for Peanuts was the Christmas series, and that was the 55 years from the release of the Charlie Brown Christmas. Now, 10,000 of these were minted in the normal, but I, like I said, I don't, they never pushed the numbers of how many they put into these TEP, TEP packaging, but I acquired two of them, although one of these is already going to be heading out to uh, a friend of mine. So, And you got the little Charlie Brown Christmas tree, which I love. I would love to actually own one of those little ones and just have it up during Christmas along with the regular tree. And then obviously you've got uh, Snoopy's house all decorated. And then on the side is exactly the same, all the main characters uh, with Woodstock a little bit more noticeable. <laughs> But this, but on the Christmas series was the first time they also came out with the first colorized version. And this one, I actually, for colorization, I actually like this one better than the other one. Because now you, because you can really see, you know, what, you know, if you compare them together, you can really see the details, right? You can see really, really good. And uh, this one, they only minted 555. And I actually have two of them. But like I said, the other one is going to a friend as well. Same person. Hopefully will be picking up both of these from me. And I will be sending them away. I only need one of each. I bought an extra one just in case. Uh, and that's the plan. Moving on, the next one, one in the series was is the uh, Valentine's special one. And this one came out just this year. You've seen this through a lot of people. And I, and once again, they only minted 10,000 of these. I don't know how many they put into the TEP. But the TEPs look cool because they have the original Peanuts logo. And I think that's really cool. So, and then obviously we have the colorized version. I picked up two of each of these. Uh, if anybody's interested in the second versions of those, I'd be willing to trade or sell, of course. Uh, and there's Snoopy uh, and Woodstock and Charlie Brown. And in the rear, of course, is always the same. You got the same standard uh, side. So this one's a really cool one. But then Atmex went ahead and did something really, really annoying, right? They did a special release. So they, they went ahead and did a special release only on eBay at their Atmex shop. And of course they did, right? And I missed it. But somebody saw that I had missed it because I had made a comment on that. And through generosity of this community, and I won't mention the name just because, uh, you know, to, uh, because I actually, because I actually don't know if, if he is okay with, uh, me passing along the info, but he went ahead and gifted me this one right here. He knew that I collected it. He knew I really wanted it and he knew that I had missed out on it. So he went ahead and sent me one. It's so awesome. Thank you so much because it completes the collection so far that I have, uh, all in TEPs. Now, of course, I'm missing a couple that you know, you probably recognizing that I don't have right now, but right now this completes the set and that's just of Snoopy. Oh, and there were only a thousand of minted of these. So they only minted 1,000 of these at the same with the other colorized, this one. So they did a thousand of these in which I have two of them. And then I did, they did a thousand of these and now I own one of them. So I'm very happy because I, I want to own the whole series. So thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Like I said, this community is absolutely amazing. The, the generosity that exists here, it's just phenomenal. But I'm going to show you the last one. And I got this one. So this is the first time that I had the opportunity to get in in time to get the proof. And inside the proof, we have a certificate of authenticity. Now, there are only 214 of these made. So I debated at first flipping this, and now I'm not sure. I'm so sure I want to do it. Uh, it's an absolute gorgeous coin. Look at this. Hold on. Let me pull it out of the, uh, pull it out of the case so you can see. Uh, so shiny. Look at that. Just look at the, look at the uh, detail on the proof. But only 214 of these were made. It is pricey. It was a very expensive coin. But as a collector and a stacker, you know, sometimes you just got to bear the weight of the collecting costs. And uh, so at this time, I don't know if I'm going to sell this, but uh, I don't have any of the other proofs. So I may end up selling this and just keeping the ones in the TEP. But for now, I'd like to, I always wanted to be able to show you off how, how really nice the, uh, the proof is. And it's just completely, it's just so shiny. And it comes in a really cool little box and it, you know, with a certificate of authenticity, like I said, it looks just, it's just really cool. And then on the outside of the box, it has this. So when you put it all together, you have this right here. So very nice. Just a beautiful, beautiful piece. 
So, and, and, and a couple other things real quick, uh, two movies really always, um, uh, that I always really loved growing up, uh, that were Charlie Brown movies. And the first one is this one, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. I love this movie. Anytime I see it on TV, I will stop what I'm doing and I will watch this movie. I just, I really, really like it. It brings, it's a lot of nostalgia for me. It brings back a lot of just memories of childhood and, uh, just, you know, happy times. Right. So, and then the other one is this one, Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown. Now this one right here, they all travel to France and this, this cartoon right here, this cartoon movie always made me want to go visit Europe ever since I was a little kid. I don't know why it, it just, it just struck a nerve on me and it made me always want to go travel to Europe. And when I was, you know, after I joined the military, I got to go travel to Europe. So, uh, that dream came true. And, uh, this, this cartoon, anytime I see this movie, anytime I see it, when it comes on, I have to watch it as well. I just, I love it. I love it. it brings back so many memories, uh, happy memories for me. So, uh, real quick, before we get to the drawing, I do want to cover one little area where, uh, we talk about, there's just some interesting facts, you know, it's just things you might not know about Charlie Brown. Uh, first, uh, you, as I said before, there's, uh, Charles Schultz was the inventor. His lifelong ambition was to be a cartoonist. And that is what he did. You know, he eventually, he started with the, with the newspapers and finally got into making actual cartoon movies. Another one was, uh, these are just, oh, by the way, these are just nine things you might not know about peanuts. And then, uh, Schultz wasn't a fan of the name peanuts. I said that earlier in the article. He didn't like it because he thought, you know, he thought it wouldn't, uh, be taken seriously. Uh, we know that uh, the strip wasn't an instant hit. It did take some time to uh, become popular, but it did, and it became huge. Many of the Peanuts characters were inspired by real people at events, as a matter of fact. Snoopy was one of Schultz's earliest Peanut characters, and uh, it's loosely based on a black-and-white dog named Spike he had as a teenager. Uh, after serving in World War II, Schultz worked as an instructor at the Minneapolis Correspondence School, where he'd taken art classes as a teen. It was there where he brief befriended Charlie Brown, whose name would later become the main character. Also, while employed at the school, Schultz became romantically involved with a redhead named Donna Johnson, who worked in the accounting department. She eventually rejected him for another man, leaving Schultz crushed. However, the little girl, or the experience, inspired him to develop a character called Little Red-Haired Girl, Charlie Brown's un <laughs> unrequested, unrequited love. So in the 1968, following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., Schultz introduces comic strip's first black character, Franklin, whose father was a soldier in Vietnam War. Another character, a yellowbird Woodstock, was named after the, the Landmark Festival. Uh, TV execs thought Charlie Brown Christmas would be a flop. Obviously, it wasn't. Snoopy actually went to space, which I discussed earlier. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, Schultz was a World War II veteran, if you didn't know that. Uh, he was drafted in the Army, assigned to the 20th Armored Infantry D Division. He trained as a machine gunner and was sent to Germany toward the end of the conflict. His division helped liberate the Dachau concentration camp. Schultz later commemorated Veterans Day in Peanuts and referenced fellow vets such as Bill Malden, who became famous for his cartoons featuring U.S. troops. Schultz was also honored on the anniversary of D-Day in Peanuts and was involved in the planning of National D-Day Memorial in Virginia. He once said, I think any sensible person with our grasp of history would have to admit that D-Day was the most important day of our century. The Peanuts creator to die, died one day before his final comic strip was relieved, as it would appear, and I discussed that earlier. And if you don't know this, there's a whole museum, museum de devoted to all things Peanuts. In 2002, Charles Schultz Museum and Research Center opened in the Sonoma County, California, where the cartoonist lived and worked for four decades. Among the museum's collection of peanuts-related artwork, letters, photo photographs, are a, re a recreation of Schultz's work studio, a life-size wrapped Snoopy doghouse by the artist Cristo. Numerous other museums, including the Louvre and Smithsonian, have, have posted peanuts-themed exhibits. In 2016, the Snoopy Museum, Tokyo, is slated to open in Japan. Well, I guess it already has, so, because this article is a little bit older. But that's just a little bit of history and uh, really neat things about Peanuts. I'm a big fan of them. I always will be. I, I really, 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 really like uh, uh, Charlie Brown and, and the movies and TV shows. I'm going to get these out of the way now so we can go ahead and do the draw for our next – this is be our sixth draw, I think, for, uh, for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So let's knock this out before we waste any more time because we're already pushing 20 minutes. So a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and bust this out and get this done. Here's the last video, and as you can see, it is 7.48 p.m. on Thursday, February 25th, so we're going to go ahead and copy that. We'll put it into the YouTube random comment generator, paste, filter duplicates, get YouTube comments. So let's see what we got. Looks like we have 100, 133 comments, into, so 133 chance to win a prize. So you ready, everybody? Let's do it. Boom. And we have David Carlisle. 
Awesome pickups. Congratulations to Millstacks and good luck to everyone. Well, congratulations to you, David. This is what you have won. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> and here is what you won, my friend. You have won yourself a 1996 silver quarter. I believe this is 90% silver, and it's a proof. And this was a quarter I found in that junk silver bag that I picked up for Monument Metals, and I pulled it out immediately and got it into a plastic flip. But now it's coming to you, my friend, so congratulations. You have won a, I believe it's a 90% quarter. It might be higher. I don't know. But it's definitely out of some type of proof set. So it is a 1996S, beautiful silver quarter. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, my friend. Just make sure you reach out to me on email. Oh, actually, before we do that, just to be 100% sure, let's verify that you're actually subscribed. All right, give me a quick second. I am going to type your name into the system. Oh, come on. Car listing. And yes, you are. I have confirmed that you are subscribed. Thank you very much, my friend. Just shoot me an email at alohastacker.gmail.com. Give me your address, and this will come out to you as early as uh, Saturday? Because this was released Friday. Okay, yep. So congratulations, my friend. And uh, let me pull this out of the way. Let's get back to uh, the table where I can say goodbye to you all. So basically, this, evening, this is going to be coming out Friday morning. So I want to wish you all, I'm going to thank you all, as usual, very much for your support. Uh, this wouldn't all be possible without you. I'm having a great time. I love stacking. I love coin collecting. I love sharing it all with you. So with that, I'm going to say happy, happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Aloha and mahalo.